As Father O'Brien mentioned, our, our little topic for meditation is the, not just the beginning of Holy Week, but I suppose really Holy Week in general. And so I'd like to take us on a little bit of a meditation uh, about perhaps what you might want to call the deepest meaning of what it is that we celebrate this week. But in order to set the stage, I want to share a little bit of a story with you. Um, this past week back at the university, there was a group of us and one day we were sitting at table in the dining room in the refectory having a little bit of a conversation and somehow or other uh, we started to tell war stories about our novitiate. I don't know if you know what that is, but the novitiate is sort of like a period in the life of somebody that joins a religious order and it's usually a little bit more intense than normal life in the order. As a matter of fact, as I was coming in the back door, I saw a couple of our current novices standing there. Um, it's the time when you officially join the order. And the language we use is you are received into the order. And this particular confer was telling a story about the day that he was received. I asked him for permission to use this story. Uh, I don't want to embarrass him. I'm not going to point him out, but he's in this church right now. So I got to be careful how I tell this story, you know. Um, of course, I'll doll it up <laughs> with some details. But he was saying that uh, the day that he was received into our community, they were at mass for the reception mass. And one of our priests was up there who will go unnamed. And uh, he was preaching at this mass. And he began by saying to the, the new novices, you know, at that time, he said, you are joining a community of wretched men. You know, you are joining a community of sinful men. You are joining a community that doesn't deserve anything. You're joining a community that basically, I guess, deserves to be in hell. They can't do their multiplication tables. They can't tie their shoes, you know? And, and I'm sure if I was sitting there, um, I, I would have one of those, as my students now say in their texts, I would have one of those OMG moments, you know, like, oh my God, you know. In my day, we called them MOG moments. It was more like mother of God, you know, like mother of God, what have I gotten into? Um, and he turned to the novice sitting next to him while this was going on. And he says to the novice sitting next to him, does this mean that after mass there's no cocktail party? <laughs> Which I think is very funny. Um, but as I was meditating on that story, as I'm prone to do at times, it suddenly dawned on me that perhaps it was a beautiful kind of little metaphor. And that, in fact, those two ideas do not necessarily mutually exclude one another. Uh, that on the one hand, we may be uncomfortable, for example, with the word wretch. As the hymn says, the old amazing grace, what, you know, save the wretch like me. We may prefer to speak about brokenness or woundedness or maybe even the word that's passing out of cultural usage these days, sinfulness. But the truth of the matter is there are aspects of us that are like that. But part of the heart of the gospel is that almost in spite of ourselves, uh, there is a party that God throws and we are still invited to us. Because God, our God, is a God of love. And so, you know, as I was beginning to meditate on Holy Week and its meaning, that sort of dawned on me that that's at the heart of the mysteries that we celebrate this week. Yesterday in the parish where I help on the weekends back in St. John's, uh, I went to great pains to remind the people at the masses that yesterday was not Palm Sunday. Yesterday was, as the Missal puts it, Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. And as a matter of fact, if we remember that Mass, uh, you'll remember there actually was very little of palm in it. That was at the beginning of the Mass. 
But the rest of the Mass, like much of this week, is really about the passion of the Lord. And that word passion in both Latin and English is one of those deliciously thick words. It's got lots of meaning. But two of the meanings that it has have to do, on the one hand, with what we sometimes think of as suffering, passio, but on the other hand, something that we tend to think about in terms of love that one can be passionate. And that slowly it is dawning me, God does not want Jesus to suffer. Suffering, you might say, is the byproduct of love. And when one focuses only on the suffering, we miss the point of the story. And so in a sense, we are entering into a week that maybe more properly might be called Passion Week. Or as we used to say, In the former liturgy, a time of passion tide. As a matter of fact, even in our opening prayer, you know, we said this rather clearly, that though we are weak and we fall, we trust that we might be revived through the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is something that our Lord undertakes because of God's love for us. And that, I suppose, also comes to bear in today's reading. The first reading was from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. This is the first of the four servant songs in the prophet Isaiah. And just to lift up some of the beautiful images, we are reminded that this servant is tender and gentle. Isaiah says, a bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Isaiah reminds us at the end that he has come to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. And so in one sense or another, because of that unconditional, irresistible love of God, it's okay to look at ourselves not in a self-preoccupied way, but simply as we are, these broken, wounded, fragile creatures who are in need of that mercy of God. You know, I don't want to put too Jungian a spin on today's gospel, which is from the 12th chapter of St. John, but if we listen very closely, if we're honest with ourselves, or at least if I'm honest with myself, I like to think that there is a little bit of Martha and Mary and Lazarus inside of me, but if I'm really honest with myself, I know that there's a little bit of Judas too, that we all have our shadow side, and that somehow or other that shadow side is taken and redeemed by the passion of our Lord. And so it strikes me that when one begins to think about this, it shouldn't be surprising that the great paradox in our faith is that sometimes the greatest sinners become the greatest saints. And that maybe, maybe in fact, um, the most wretched people of all are people who don't know that they're broken. Because not to know one's wretchedness is not to really be able to relinquish oneself deeply to the mercy of God. But as we move into this holy week, it is that mercy that we highlight. You know, when I was a little kid, I had a teddy bear. It's taking me thousands of dollars of therapy uh, and some aging wisdom and maturity, not to be embarrassed by the fact. I, I, I even named this teddy bear. The name was Wayne. I don't know why, except that there were twins in our parish who were Michael and Wayne, and since I was a Michael, he was going to be a Wayne, you know? I used to take this thing with me when I was a little kid, and, you know, it was old. It was passed down in the family. I had An eye had fallen out, my mother had sewn an eye in with a button, you know? It was getting worn and she she sewed the places where it was worn. 
you know? And, and finally, they just keep splitting apart. And she sort of retrograded this old sweater and put it around to keep the stuffing in, you know? Well, again, it took me years to figure out that teddy bear's us. There we are. The stuffing is falling out of us. And God's mercy and God's grace, it comes through the passion of our Lord like a sweater and it wraps around us and it holds us in. Because that's the God who loves us and hopefully that's the God we love. God wants the best for us. God wants the most for us. God wants the greatest for us. I'm beginning to sound like President Trump. Only with God, he can pull it off. But the heart of the matter is this. God loves us just as we are. And as we move into Holy Week, let's not forget that.